Okay, now back to you, Melissa. So you add, you, you included these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the first is contributor experience or contributor community health. Uh, contributor experience is a term that we're borrowing from the Kubernetes community, and they've been using this for a while. So that is about uh, the whole experience of contribution to the project from newcomers to people who are becoming maintainers, who are tra treading that path. And so a few of the user stories there are, for example, as a maintainer or contributor experience lead, which are the people basically in charge of onboarding new people into the project and making sure that they have the information and the access that they need to do their contributions. I want to know if my community can manage mentoring and support new contributors, including issue response time, pull request reviews, uh, developer experience infrastructure, and community engagement opportunities. So can we measure that? Can we measure if we have that bandwidth, if people are actually engaging with new contributors? Uh, we know that, for example, from a engagement point of view, new contributors tend to stick around projects that are responsive to their first pull requests. Can we, uh, do we have the bandwidth to review those pull requests and make sure that they are attended in time? Uh, another one is as a new community member, I want to know if I can get adequate support from the community. So I'm interested in that metric because I want to know if I'm going to be, um, if they are going to respond, respond to me. Or as a maintainer and contributor, I may want to identify areas where community service and support is lacking in an effort to provide support where needed. For example, I want to contribute, but I want to contribute in an area that is currently being overlooked or that doesn't have enough support. So I want to choose the areas of contribution according to project need. Uh, but usually the project doesn't even know that. So is there a way that we can make sure that we have this as a document, for example, that says here are the areas where we need help? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I want to know if I'm able to convert contributors into maintainers. This is a big one for us because of the bus factor that we were discussing before. So this is that goes into sustainability as well. Like I want to make sure that people have the information that they need to trust that if they contribute enough, they're going to become maintainers one day. For example, a lot of people have an interest in knowing that and this is not usually explicit in any of our projects. The, the, usually the message is, if you are around for some time and I like you, then you become a maintainer. But we don't have like explicit, like how many contributions do you need to do? How much time do you need to stick around to be able to be considered for a maintainer status? Um, yeah, and that is very similar. I wanna know how to move forward into leadership roles, like steering council, voting member, working group lead, or whatever existing leadership roles in the project. Um, and yeah, another one as a contributor, I wanna know if there are prerequisites for contributing to this project. This is very common in scientific open source. Some of the projects are very domain specific and to be able to contribute, it's not enough to know Python. It, it, you need to have some domain expertise to be able to evaluate algorithms, you know, to be able to choose which kinds of techniques uh, fit into this project, for example. Yeah, and then uh, through all of that, uh, there's, I, I don't know, I listed a few metrics, I'm really not sure about those. So this is the place where I have the most trouble because I don't have experience around this. So I just listed a few, some concerns that can come up, for example, can we incorporate DEI centered practices here? So it's not just about measuring everything, uh, it uh, like without concern for who is being measured like sometimes we want to be more granular in this and make sure that for example the first time contributors maybe we want to focus on a specific group that is currently underrepresented in the project or uh, we want to make sure that we have different backgrounds of people joining the project not just the same people coming over and over again maybe we want to have access for people with different languages or you know um, all of that. How can we measure communications and appropriate interactions within the community? That's a big one for me. Uh, is there a way that we can make sure that we have positive interactions with the community and we're not off-putting in a way that people step away from the project? Unfortunately, extremely common in our projects. And so this is something that would be interesting if we had a way to, I don't know, measure, but maybe we can, you know, flag this somehow as something that is important. Um, yeah, small projects may not have the bandwidth to support a community. So this is 
goes to the user story that I was mentioning above, like how can we actually, do we have the bandwidth to support new contributors in that way? Um, yeah, and then a few metrics, for example, I think we could do like effective, do we have effective documentation? Uh, do we have contributor to maintainer governance processes and are they clear? Uh, different engagement modes. Can we measure how many different engagement modes do we have in the project? Do we have different communication channels? Um, all of that. Yeah. I mean, we have chaos metrics for almost everything that you've described. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this sounds uh, great. So I'm um, so curious what um, Dawn thinks with respect to if you're leaning into the work that has been done at Kubernetes, Don has quite a bit of experience in Kubernetes as an understatement. And so how Kubernetes <laughs> thinks about the contributor experience. Yeah, and, and I'm also, I'm also um, a co-chair of the CNCF Contributor Strategy Technical Advisory Group. Um, so, so we do, we do templates and uh, resources for a lot of CNCF projects. Um, and as you were going through this, I was I was kind of thinking of of that to be honest, because we have we have templates around things like like a contributor ladder, which talks about a lot of these things, like how do you convert you know contributors into maintainers, and like you mentioned, how do you how do you decide when you know it might be the right time to approach someone to become a maintainer, so that it's not just um, I like you, you're a maintainer now, right? Um, so putting some a little more a little more rigor behind it. So we do have we do have loads of like templates and resources that people can use. Um, anybody can use. They're sort of geared towards CNCF projects, and I'd be happy to happy to provide more um, details about any of that if that would be of interest. Um, it's not metrics related. It's more like best practice related. But I feel like it's um, relevant uh, to the discussion. Yeah. No. Definitely. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I just it, it sounds just I put that in the chat too. It sounds like it's it's a balance of like guidance and templates that can be mm -hmm. provided mm -hmm. for communities based on the experience that other communities have. Um as yeah, well. Yeah, I, I, I hesitate to take like too much like I think the CNCF does great work and the whole Kubernetes community, but they are huge. And I think we have a different of scale here in the projects. So I don't know if that's yeah. if I'm true in that perception, but no, you're... it's just so different. Yeah. Right. So one one of well, so so yes, that's absolutely true when you're talking about Kubernetes, and it's absolutely true when you're talking about some of the CNCF graduated projects. But there are also loads of like little tiny projects in the CNCF sandbox um, and incubating. So it's it's kind of it's kind of all over the board, and that's that to be honest has been the most um, difficult challenge when it comes to providing resources, right, is because uh, the resources that will help a project in Sandbox are not the resources that, you know, someone's going to use with, with a Kubernetes-sized project. Um, so, so yeah, so we, what we've tried to do is create the, the templates that we have are sort of modular with the idea that you pull things out that you don't need. Um, so, yeah, so I can send you, I can send you some stuff. That would be great. Yeah. Can you add it to the minutes, Don? I will add it to the minutes. Yes. Thank you. So looking at those, I have pasted a link to all our metrics uh, in the Excel sheet and I have like mapped uh, just few metrics to the documentation. So we can even like map our existing metrics to address these questions. That would be wonderful. Yeah. So, so if you go back to the same uh, Google Doc template, go, uh, scroll it down. Uh, uh, the Google, yeah, this one. Scroll it. See, I have mapped these existing metrics right now. Oh, so, yay! Uh, so, like, uh, and I, the entire link of all the metrics is in the Excel sheet. We can easily map those metrics. Like, I can take this action item. That you have these story, I can easily map what are the current existing metrics that we have for addressing these stories right now at this stage. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. I mean, again, this is kind of, I came up with this because I was interested for our 
like I work in four projects. So I was interested in this for these four projects. Maybe if we open up the discussion, other people will bring different user stories, right? So this is not the yeah. full thing. So that's why like would be interesting to get more feedback from the community. I think last time we had a big meeting, uh, but even so, I think it would be more helpful to get as many perspectives as possible. But yeah, that would be a great starting point. Yeah. Have you found the eight nat instance that uh, I gave Anessa and you useful at all? Well, Anessa has been using it more than me. So <laughs> I, okay. I was traveling last week, so I was kind of away for the past, you know, uh, 10 days. But um, I think she is, has been finding it pretty useful. Yes. Yeah, I think it gives you a lot of the things you're looking for here already. Yeah. So Don, Melissa, Don had put a few of the templates in there in the minutes. So okay. you can take a look at those. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And then I had a question mm -hmm. for you, Melissa. So um, one of the things that has come up in some of the other context working groups <laughs> is just it's kind of the uh, I'll say like the directionality of what you want to do with the metrics. So in the meeting after this. Um, and in the university ASPO meeting, like there are metrics that can be brought forward that support, um, say, an ASPO kind of justifying themselves within an organization. So these are metrics kind of about the ASPO themselves. Mm -hmm. There are also metrics that can be used to help understand open source engagement within the organization, which is probably a different set of metrics and how those metrics are used might be a little bit different for your in your situation, like if we, if you were to say gather metrics on, say, starter project health, for example, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. What would you What would you do with that information? Where Where do you take it? Is it Does it stay with you for the particular projects that you care about? Do you communicate it to the maintainers and have a meeting where you talk through and do you take it to funders? You know what I mean? Like, where are you? What's yeah. the directionality of this? I would say that I see three different uh, ways that these can be used. One is funding, of course. I think this is um, a lot of funders would love to have something like this to be able to rank proposals. And I'm not really sure if this is helpful or not, like for the projects, because, you know, it may not capture the full, and, and that's always the thing with metrics, right? So it may not capture the full um, story around the project. But yes, definitely funders, communicating with funders. Um, I think a second one is communicating with other projects that, so I think this is true for every open source project, but for scientific projects, there's a, a higher concern around this, which is dependency. So if I choose to depend on your project, so let's say you are a scientific project that wants to use NumPy under the hood to do something, how do you choose, like, is this a project that I want to depend on? Because I want to make sure that my project works 10 years from now because I want to have reproducibility in my research. And I want to make sure that this is long term and people can come back and verify whatever research that I'm doing. If I depend on a software or a project that dies in the meantime, um, what does that say about my project health? Right. So it's a house of cards. And if you have one project that falls through the cracks and then you lose that reproducibility long term. So a lot of people are concerned with that. And so I think downstream, the projects would look at that and say, do I depend on this project or not based on the health? Um, and I think the third thing is like contributors, I'm pretty sure would love to know some of these before they join a project. Is this a project, uh, is this community one that I would like to be a part of? Is this healthy? Is this like, am I gonna get help? Am I gonna get mentoring? Am I gonna get support to, to do the things that I wanna do in this community? So I would say those are the three audiences that we would communicate these metrics to. Does that make sense? Is that what you were asking? That's 100% what I was asking, and it's not the answer that I was expecting. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I, I think I the 
my first thought would have been communicating with the community but i but i had i also when you were saying that that's probably not it i remember that you and melissa have talked or you and anessa have talked about this as a real challenge within the community to yeah. to bring metrics to community members so you know in hindsight that makes sense um and so like one of the things that so th this is super helpful and i guess from your perspective would there be a, a place that would be most sensible to start because we may not be able to do all three of these things at one time we can certainly yeah. have them on a roadmap but m maybe you know with contributors prior to joining the project for example i don't know mm -hmm. like for that but is there an, an angle that is of interest to you and perhaps Anessa and maybe folks that were on the call a couple of weeks for ago. For us, yeah, I, I, I would say for me and Anessa, contributors is the focus just because that's what we're doing is like communicating mostly with the contributors. But I'm not sure if that's, again, in the interest of all the other scientific open source projects that would like to participate in this conversation. So this is my vote. Yeah, <laughs> I don't speak for the whole ecosystem, so we might need to to be careful there. But yeah, I I would yeah. rather see that one first. Okay, there, there is a distinction between you know NumPoc is pretty heavily it's pretty held heavily supported all things considered for a mm -hmm. scientific open source project, and there are a lot of smaller projects exactly. that have these different kinds of challenges where just and really in many cases scientists that run things out of a lab with a couple of partner labs, that idea of community is beyond where they're even able to think right now. It's really, mm -hmm. I've open sourced it, I've shared it. That's that's my contribution. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and I added a note on that second one because that's, that's something we've been talking a lot about within the OSPO working group because it's something that, it's something we're concerned about at VMware. It's something that lots of other companies are really concerned about, which is, um, you know, assessing these projects before we depend on them. Because like you said, if you depend on this project and it just disappears or something terrible happens with it, then that impacts the work that you're doing as, as well. And so I think that that's something that's important across, across a lot of contexts. Yeah. Well, it's good to hear that this is, yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> so then I'm wondering, like, kind of based on these three different ways that the information could be used, does that kind of have an impact on which of these metrics models, or do they all do all five of them? I think there's five on this page right mm -hmm. now, three existing and two proposed. Mm -hmm. there, or do all five necessarily, you know? fit in all categories or I'm just again trying to think of, I mean, not again but I'm trying to think of like what are some first steps that we could use to see how this one of these areas kind of lives in the world or exists in practice yeah I see for example the last one so if you scroll all the way down which is the second yeah. that I'm proposing is the project sustainability for example I would see this one as more relevant for funders and downstream projects than the other ones like for example the contributor experience health or um the other metric that i'm proposing would be more for the contributors so i would see those i think are pretty much easy to fit there yeah, um, think, the others i don't know sorry shen no i think sustainability these are the i was in a meeting with my associate dean for research yesterday and these are exactly the kinds of questions that she's interested in for software she's written and wants to open source so like this resonates from last afternoon are there any melissa are there any existing metrics models say for example project starter or yeah the, like i the, think that i so i i see that one as the basic so that would potentially be the first one that you measure for anything so I, I I think that would fit all of the three. All of them. Yeah, yeah. I think this is um, like the basics that you need to do. And then the others, um, let's see. 
Yeah, and that's kind of how it was designed, right? The starter project yeah, health yeah. model was designed to be like like the ones that you start with and see what you see what you have, and then and then you're expected to add other things on on top of that. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, the contributor, um, sorry, community activity, which is the first uh, model that I'm listing there. I think would be more relevant for contributors and prod downstream projects, but I'm not sure if this is super interesting to funders, if they have the sustainability one, for example. I think, I think funders would be interested in, for the, for especially nascent projects, some mm -hmm. funders would be interested in knowing if you have an open source project that could be applicable in the curing of some disease or the solving of some great scientific problem that if shared and if sustained would accelerate scientific progress. You know, and the, you know, the great example is the golden path data and software, you know, without that all being open, we'd probably still be mapping the human genome. But that one, so that's my my question is there's community activity and project engagement. Would mm -hmm. you say both of them are relevant for that question? Because it seems like it overlaps a little bit in that sense, because it's like both are needed if you're looking for something like that, right? It's not just the activity or is it? I, 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 there, there's a stage before there's a community where a project is open source and accepting contributions. And I think community is a part of sustainability but not every project gets there especially in my observation especially in the scientific space because communities development and management is effort work and resources that don't often exist in science like the r community i think is rather exceptional in the scientific open source community yeah <clears throat> no you're and right. the focus yeah. community for that matter that you know those are a couple of cases Mm hmm No, you're right. That makes sense. Yeah. So a discussion that has come up in the OSPO, the corporate OSPO channel, that this is one we'll talk about today, Don. This is what it's one that Emma had brought up, which was okay, so we can we have these areas of interest like communicating with funders in this case or communicating with other projects. And we have some models or metrics that we think might be useful in this particular situation. I think what what Emma, she's at Microsoft, is taking a look at is could we ask a few companies in this case to actually deploy deploy these models and talk about how they are being how it's being used inside of a company. What how is it actually communicated? Has it what's the conversation around it? And I guess that has that's like in the back of my head right now as I think about these that if there's a way that we could you know take a look at say the project the starter project health metric model as a deployable metric model in a couple different communities that may be of interest well um, I think for example Nemfocus would be on board with that probably yeah, and, um, and we just start seeing how these are how we understand them in practice, you know, and how and, they inform decisions. Um, I'm not sure because I I don't know like their interests are bandwidth on this, but CVI might also be interested, right? Because I'm um, actually we're, we actually have a talk with I have a talk with Dario tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, okay, I could definitely Dario is at CVI. Uh, Don, if he's kind of the contact that oh, all of us know yeah. <laughs> on this side of the world. Um, and so definitely I could bring this up that there may be some interest in, I, I don't know what other people think. I'm I'm sorry if I'm steering a conversation, but I'm just trying to organize what we have in front of us. Yeah, I've had a lot of conversations with Dario and probably the most recent one was two months ago where he indicated they were headed in a completely different direction. Okay. <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. So, <laughs> yeah. What do people think of at least? I mean, we could continue this conversation a little bit and think about, like, I think with Vinod 
identifying some of the metrics in the proposed metrics models. Like we can continue that to move those forward. We can open the conversation about, you know, are there with respect to the three that you brought forward, Melissa, like communicating with funders or other projects, like, is that the full uh, suite of things mm -hmm. that we care about? Like we can continue to have that conversation. And then kind of under that, are there particular models or metrics that could shed light on that, that particular issue? Um, do we agree on those? And then from there, do we have a few projects that would be willing to to take a look at these models in practice and talk about yeah. how they understand them and communicate them. Yeah, that sounds interesting to me. I think, um, I don't know that I can add anything extra. I think that this is like beyond here. I think we would need more feedback from more people, like different projects and different yeah, communities, for sure. and, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I think we're at that stage. What do what do other people think? Again, I'm sorry if I'm like you could tell no, me terrible. I really, I really like the idea of <clears throat> trying a couple of these out with a project or two. And then I think that that would also help us have the conversation with other communities because it's like, hey, we did this for, you know, for this community. This is this is what we're seeing. And and maybe it would generate some excitement from other projects to to better understand um, how they could do something similar. Yeah, so um, part of my grant that I'm working on uh, is trying to figure out these metrics for the four projects that we're working on, which are NumPy, SciPy, MathPoglib, and Pandas. Again, they are big projects, and so they are like unique in that sense, but we could propose using some of these, uh, like applying some of these metrics to these projects and then seeing what comes out of it. Maybe even if it's not public, like we don't have to publish the full results, but just for us, for a kind of understanding, you know, what that would say about the project, if that fits, if if that makes sense, if it's capturing what we wanted to capture. So I can propose that. That would be amazing. Yeah. Real. Yeah. And I, I think you have some of that in the site that Anessa is looking at as well already. Yeah, exactly. That that's what she's uh, she started looking at that exactly because of that. Like we kind of promised that we would do that in the grant. So um, I, I think that's a it's a good point to to just try to we could just use the existing metrics, but I was uncomfortable with that because I felt like we could do something a little bit better. So which was great that we're having all of this conversation. I think this makes a lot of sense. So um, yeah. And my on that, my my recommendation would be to start with a metric model that exists. For example, mm -hmm. like the starter project health metric model. We have talked about that one for yeah. a while now. And we've actually gone through a few iterations with it to make sure that the metrics were appropriate and they told the story that Don was the one that put that together, that that Don was trying to tell with that metric model. And so I, I feel like it's a pretty solid metric model as we've looked at it in practice. And then Concurrently, I think we could, as Vinod is taking a look at some of those metrics, like building out, for example, or building out, you know, these additional metrics models. Yeah. So for some of that, we actually have, i um, not sure if you've ever seen this page, it's called DevStats. Uh, so the Scientific Python yeah. Project. Yeah, you have, right? Okay, yeah. cool. So there's a few of those. So for example, we don't have there, we don't have the bus factor, but we have the pony factor, which is a little bit more spread out. So instead sure. of one person is like how many people are responsible for 80% of the contributions or something like that. So um, we could do that just with the data that we have there. So uh, we don't have Augur or uh, available for all the four projects, but we could that do that with some of the data that's already there. Um, but for some of the other metrics, I think we would need to have, you know, the the tool working for the four project before we get yeah. anything. Yeah, for sure. We have to like bring that together yeah. as opposed to just saying, all right, projects, here's the model, <laughs> you figure it out. Yeah. yeah. But making it easy for the projects to obtain that data and mm -hmm. see it and be able to reflect on it clearly. 
All right, this is cool. And we are at the end of time. So what are next steps? Like, are there any action items that you'd like me to do before next meeting or? I think if you could start the conversation with the the communities that you have, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the four that you had mentioned, just ab about this, maybe the what we're kind of proposing that we're yeah. taking a look at, maybe you could almost just take this, I think, you know, here's how we understand why metrics are important and what they can help us do. Here are some of the models that we'd like to take a look at. And we'd love to work with you as a community to, to see what these models could tell you. Are you interested? Yeah, that would be great. And we also have, are any of you going to be at SciPy next month? I'm not, I'm not trying to. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I'm going to be there and this could be like, if we have Augur working for some of the projects, you know, we could sit down with people, show them the tool and explain how it works. And maybe that will also help with buy-in. When is, when is SciPy? Um, July 10 to 15, if I'm not mistaken. And where, and where is it? Would the, In Austin, Texas. Would there be an opportunity on the 10th or 12th to communicate? And I'm only asking because the 13th to the 15th is my mother's 80th birthday celebration. Oh. I missed that. I'm a dead man. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, maybe I think the 11 and the 12 are when they're having uh, tutorials. So I don't know if everybody would be there. I, for example, I'll be arriving on the th 13th in the morning. Okay. That's 13, 14, and 15 are when the talks are happening. And then on the weekend, over the weekend, there's the sprints. Yeah, I'll have to be in Portland for Fosse that week. The 15th is like the Saturday. So there's, yeah, yeah. okay. Okay. I'll send you a private note. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah maybe there's something I can do remotely that would be helpful. Yeah, we can talk about it definitely. And I'll, once I'm done mapping all the uh, existing uh, metrics, I'll uh, put it on the Slack and then you can review them. That sounds amazing. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good to yeah, see you. thank you for a great meeting. Okay. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Okay, bye. Bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. bye.